Welcome to this video series on value of information analysis and health technology assessment. In this video, we're going to be talking about the expected value of perfect information. Let's go. Often we wish to measure the value of reducing uncertainty in our clinical economic models. To do so, we conduct a value of information analysis. These value of information analyses often report some or all of the below, that being the expected value of perfect information, the expected value of perfect parameter information, or the expected value of sample information. What these statistics measure is the dollar value of improving our model either generally or along a specific parameter. In this video, we'll focus on the computing of the expected value of perfect information. The formula that we use for computing the expected value of perfect information is the following. We go and we say that is the expected value with perfect information minus the expected value without perfect information, where theta in this notation is a particular state of nature from a finite list of states of the world's uh, capital theta, and J is a particular intervention, which we're going and considering, along a list of treatments. We further note that these expectations that we're going and we're taking could be written as your standard expected values, where P theta is going to be the probability of state of the world theta where this NB J theta is the net benefit from treatment J in state of nature theta, which is written as following. All this could be a bit overwhelming on one slide. So let's go and break this down part by part and illustrate an example where there are two treatments and two states of the world. So let's go and talk about our first part of our EVPI calculation. That is the expected value with perfect information. So what ends up going and happening is that we go and first observe nature and then we go and we best respond. The way this is clear is by first going and thinking about this in terms of a decision tree. We first go and start out with a chance node and after that uncertainty resolves, then we go and we pick our treatment. So what this goes and tells us is what is the average payoff if we best respond in every state of nature? So we first observe what nature goes and gives us and if we go and we best respond in every state we get an average of optimal responses now this next term the expected value without perfect information this is just seen as a regular decision tree where we go and we have our decision node followed by our chance nodes so this is a well-defined uh, decision tree with our terminal values being each of these net benefits now our task is that we want to go and pick the treatment with the highest expected net benefit on each one of these nodes. This is simply picking the treatment with the maximum net benefit. So now that we know what each of our terms and our expected value of perfect information calculation means, let's see how we would calculate it in the context of a simple spreadsheet exercise. Suppose we have the following data, where we have data on costs and effects of different treatments where our threshold values, which we're going and we're considering is lambda is equal to 100. So we compute each of these net benefits, right? By going and putting lambda times effect one minus cost here. And we get each of these net benefit equations and we have this maximum net benefit uh, row. And we're gonna go and choose the one that goes and has the highest one. The Excel formula, which we'll use to go in and calculate the expected value of perfect information in this case is that we're going to look for the average maximum net benefit that is the average of our best responses minus the maximum of our two average outcomes here so if we're just going and observing our expected outcomes on this case with this threshold the expected value of perfect information is going to be 60. as we change our thresholds our threshold values will change so we can actually go and produce a visual and that visual is going to be like this one here, where we have on our vertical axis, the expected value of perfect information and our threshold value here on the side. Now, we could go and see some pictures where we go and have kinks in these curves. And we're gonna go and explain what it means to go and have these kinks and sudden cutoffs in these curves. But as it stands, the expected value of perfect information calculation is really just a linear calculation that we go and we have. We're just defining the difference of two uh, linear equations or two values that we go and have. So as it stands, no kinks are going and happening. We'll go and see in a later video uh, what it means when we go and we have kinks. But right now, we should just go and get this straight line. So 
that's an explanation of the expected value of perfect information in the context of health technology assessment. I'll see you in the next video where we're going to be talking about the expected value of perfect parameter information in terms of thinking of that in terms of not only the calculation, but in terms of the decision tree. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.